Today we will solve the numericals on the model number 1. In today's uh, session, we will solve the numericals on the transformer on no load condition as well as load condition, finding out the equivalent resistance, reactance, impedances and validity of these values of R1 and R02 refer to the primary and the second. The first numerical it is on the transformer on no load. Uh, the statement of the, the numerical is a 2200 volt power 250 volt transformer takes 0.5 amperes at a power factor 0.3 that is lagging on open circuit. Find the magnetizing and working component of a no load primary current. Here our main object is to find out the value of the working component of the no load current and the magnetizing component of a current. Then we know already just you have to what are the data they are given just you have to note down. The first the I naught what is given is 0.5 amperes and the power factor cos phi naught what is given is 0.3 that is like it. And at the same time transformation ratio is also given that is not necessary in this the particular calculations. The what we need is IW and I mu. Therefore you have to write the expression for I naught, IW and I mu. That is IW is I naught cos phi naught. IW is I naught cos phi naught. I mu is I naught sin phi naught. Or I mu is equal to I naught square and minus IW square under square okay just first i naught is known cos phi naught is known and it is very easy to find out iw that is iw is equal to i naught cos phi naught i naught is given cos phi naught is also given just you have to substitute and you are getting the value that is iw is 0.15 amps is the the working component of no load current we know the value of i naught we know the value of iw then I mu can be calculated as it is I naught square minus I w square under square root or the other way is finding out phi naught from this that is the phi naught is equal to cos inverse of 0.3 then you can find out what is sin phi naught I naught sin phi naught gives the I mu or I w is known I naught is known then you can make use of the formula I mu is equal to I naught square minus I w square it is under square root. If you are substituting the values of the I naught as a 0.5 square and minus 0.15 square then what I am getting is I mu is 0.476 and this is the, the magnetizing component of the, the no load current. Numericals are very simple. You must know the, the formulas which formula you have to apply for finding out the the value of the unknown quantities. The next problem a single phase transformer has 1000 turns on the primary and 200 turns on the, the secondary. The no load current is 3 amperes at a power factor of 0.2 lagging. Calculate the primary current and power factor when the secondary current is 280 amperes at a power factor of 0.8 lag. What he asked is the no load current is 3 amperes at power factor point now calculate the primary current that is I1 he is asking what is given is I0 and what is given is here the I2 then if you know the value of I0 and I2 and the transformation ratio of the, the transformer then you can he is asking you to calculate the what is the value of the the input current or it is a primary current I1. We know that basically the primary current consists of the two components. One is no load component, a no load current that is I0 and the another one is the counterbalancing current I1 dash. That is the vector sum of I0 and I1 dash gives the, the total current I1. Then I0 is directly given here 3 amperes and also its power factor is given. However, we don't know to the what is the value of I1 dash. I1 dash can be calculated as K times I2 and its phase angle is exactly opposite to the, the I2. 
just you can see how exactly I am proceeding for solving this numerical. For that, first what I am doing is I am drawing the, the, the vector diagram for the, the transformer for I1 in terms of I0 and I1 dash. I have got first I have got I0 which is lagging V1 at an angle of phi0. In this case, it is cos inverse of 0.2 that is angle phi0 that we are finding out. Then we have got <coughs> the secondary current of 280 MS lagging 0.8 lagging means with respect to V2 this current 280 is lagging by an angle of cos inverse of 0.8 that is yeah, I can call that as a phi or uh, phi 2 that is i2 that is it is lagging V2 by an angle of phi 2 that we are getting from this when we are calculating that one. Then counterbalancing current is producing in the exactly opposite direction having the magnitude of k times i2 okay that is i1 dash that is k times i2 if I are adding this i0 and i1 dash then what I am getting is the value of i1 that is vector sum of i0 and i1 dash what I am getting is the i1 therefore from the given data just I want to calculate all those things first I am calculating the what is the transformation ratio what is the transformation ratio it is secondary terms by primary terms that is 200 by 100 that is equal to 0.2 that is 0.2 is the transformation ratio then the I2 can be written as 280 an angle of 36.87 degree. Why? Cos phi is 0.8 lagging, therefore phi can calculate that is cos inverse of 0.8 that what you are getting is 36.87. Therefore, in the vector form or in the polar form, the secondary current can be written as 280 an angle of minus 36.87 degrees. Now I1 dash is we know that k times I2, therefore it is 0 0.2 into 200, 280 an angle of 36.87. That is, this I1 dash you are producing in the opposite direction, that is I1 dash having a magnitude of 0 0.2 into 280, that is k times I2. Then this angle is 36.87, therefore. This angle is also that is this angle means this angle is also 36.87 this angle this angle is also 36.87 which is lagging v1 by angle 36.87 <coughs> therefore the i1 dash that is what we are calculating here is after multiplying what I am getting is 56 an angle of minus 36.87 is i1 dash. I know the value of i1 dash. I know the value of i0. Vectorially, I am adding these two. I am vectorially adding these two so that I am getting i1. Or you can apply the parallel from law. It is one and same. We know that phi0 can be calculated cos inverse of 0.2. That is, power factor is 0.2. Therefore, phi is equal to cos inverse of 0.2. That is equal to 78.5 degree. What phi naught I am getting here is it is 78.5, but it is lagging V1, therefore you have to write it as negative value. Therefore, what I am writing here is it is 3 an angle of 78.5. 3 an angle of minus 78 because it lags V1 by an angle of 78.5. Then how to get I1? It is a vector sum of I naught and I dash that I am doing here. That is I1 is equal to I naught plus I1 dash. Therefore, substitute the value of I1, uh, I naught that is 3 an angle of minus 78.5 plus 56 an angle of 36.87 that is the value of I1 dash that is what I am looking for here. Then Using the calculator, you can directly add these two. That is what I am getting is 
27 an angle of minus 38.82 degrees. This is how we have to find out the value of the current I1. It is a very simple, only thing is that you must know the, the concept. What is the value of I1 in terms of I0, I0 at I1 dash? Then how to fix the, the phase and the magnitude of I0 at I1 dash from the given data that you have to carefully work out. Then we will take up the, the third numerical. A 50 kVA 4400 volt to 120 volt transformer has R1 3.5 ohm and R2.309 ohm. The values of reactances are 5.2 and 0.0015 ohm respectively for primary and secondary. Calculate, you can know so many things is given. That is equivalent resistance as referred to the primary, that is RO1. Equivalent resistance referred to the secondary, that is RO2. Equivalent reactance as referred to the primary and secondary, that is XO1 and XO2. And equivalent impedance as referred to both the primary and secondary, that is ZO1 and ZO2. Total copper losses first use the individual resistance, that is you have to use the individual current, the individual resistance, find out what is the total the copper loss and using the, the equivalent resistance also you can calculate the what is the copper loss and you have to comment on the, the result. Okay. We will proceed. The uh, numerical looks like a, a length here. If we are noting down the things, if you go on solving it is very easy. Okay. Now we will now first thing is that you have to find out the transformation ratio because we need for transformation ratio for transferring the resistance and reactant from one side to another side. Therefore, how to find out the transformation ratio? It is from the, the voltage ratio that is 220 by 4400. That is 220 by 4400. That is what I am getting is 1 by 20. Nothing but it is 0 0.05 in the transformation ratio. Then you list out the, the what are the given quantities that is then you can find out what is the full load secondary current. How to find out the secondary current, full load current? It is KV rating divided by the secondary voltage. That is 50 into 1000. It is uh, written, there are one uh, zero is extra here. It is 50 into 1000 divided by 220. That is what I am getting is 227.3 amperes. That is 227.3 address you can make it a correction here it is thousand around ten thousand it is thousand just I'll make it here only the correction that is I'm using that is not bad that is that is fifty into thousand into two twenty then two twenty seven Then what I am what I am getting is 227.3 amperes is the, the secondary current. Then once we know the secondary current, then make use of the transformation ratio that is I1 by I2 is equal to K. Therefore, I1 that is the primary current you can find out from K times I2 that is 11.36 amperes. 11.36 amperes. Then you can not only the different values of the given quantities R1, R2, X1, X2. All these are the given quantity here R1, R2, X1 and X2. Then first thing what he asked is equivalent resistance as referred to the primary side. That is RO1. You have to write RO1. RO1 is primary resistance itself R1 plus the secondary resistance referred to the, the primary side that is how we are getting it is by dividing the square of the, the transformation ratio that is I am writing here equation equivalent resistance as referred to the primary it is written as R01 that is equal to R1 plus R2 by K square all the things are given R1, R2 and K also you are calculated here then just you have to merely substitute the values in this what I am getting is 7.05 ohm is the total resistance of the transformer referred to 
to the, the primer side. If you are referring to the primer side, the resistance is 7.05 ohm. Okay. In the second case, he is asking you to calculate the equivalent resistance as referred to the, the secondary side. Means R02 he is asking. That is R02 is R2 plus K square times R. This R02 is R2 plus K square times R1. Then you are getting 0 0.017625 ohm is the, the equivalent resistance referred to the, the secondary side. Then if you want to cross verify, suppose the other possibility is also possible that is R01 is already there directly can convert into R02 by multiplying K square to this. Also it, it has to yield the same result. The same thing is demonstrated here that is R02 is also K square times R01 that is also you are getting the same value. You can see here, you can get the, the same value. Okay. Then equivalent reactants as referred to the, the primary same the formula you have to make use of x0 is x01 or the reactants referred to the, the primary is x1 plus x2 divided by k square and if you are substituting the values then what I am getting is l 12 ohm. Similarly equivalent reactants referred to the, the secondary side it is nothing but k square times k k square times x01 that is 0 0.08 ohm or you can calculate it is x2 that is that x2 plus k square times x1 k square times x1 also yield the, the same result then equivalent impedance as referred to the primary equivalent impedance is asking impedance means it is a combination of resistance and the reactance it is equivalent impedance referred to the primary side is asking therefore you have to find out ZO1 is equal to under square root RO1 square plus XO1 square under square root. Okay. That is otherwise it is RO1 plus JX1. You can directly make use of in your calculator RO1 and XO1 in a complex form. You can put it and convert it to its polar form. What I am getting is 13.23 and angle of 57.81 is the, the impedance of the, the transformer referred to the primary side. Okay, equivalent impedance referred to the secondary side, then either you can multiply the k square times z01 so that you can get z02 or it, you can make it r02 zx01. That is what you are getting here is 0 0.0331 and angle of 57.81 degrees. Then what he asked is the copper loss using the, the resistance. I know the value of I1, I know the value of the I2, I know the individual resistance I am finding for the, the total copper loss of the transformer. That is the total copper loss of the loss using the individual resistance what I am getting 910.4 watts. Then I am calculating the copper loss, same copper loss using the equivalent resistance of the primary and secondary separating. First I am calculating using the equivalent resistance of the primary. That is, I am considering R1, R2 to the, the primary side and R1 is also added R1, I1 square, R01. Then that what I am getting is, once again the value what I am getting is 910.4 watts. Here also we are getting 9 because either it is sum of the two resistance or the total equivalent resistance multiplied by square of the current refer to the, the primary side. You can refer to the secondary also, that is I2 square R02, in that case also you are getting the same result as 910.4 watts. Means the whatever the values were calculated, R02, XO2, all values are the correct because all they are matching, it is demonstrated using this particular formula. In the next session, few more numericals will solve it.